Good afternoon, Year 4, and welcome to your science lesson this week. So let's start with our just checking grid. So last week, where would you find wood lice? Last unit, what is a fair test? In our last term, how many times a day should you brush your teeth? And do you know for how long you should brush them? And then from last year, can you name a food group? And last year, year three. Okay. So note your answers down and then we will check them. So did you get it? So you'd normally find wood lice under a log or wood louse under a log in a dark place, a dark damp place. What is a fair test? Well, it's a method to investigate where you, it's a method to investigate, comma, where you keep all variables the same except one. So variables mean things that you can change. So you could change them, but you keep them all the same except for one, the one you are testing. Last term. So you should brush your teeth at least twice a day for ideally two minutes each time. And two minutes is longer than you think. So have a go at timing yourself. Can you name a fruit, a food group? So fruit and vegetables, carbohydrates, proteins, dairy, fats and oils. These are all food groups and we need a mixture of all of them to have a healthy balanced diet. Okay, so our big question this week, how different are organisms? So our learning objective, to be able to group organisms according to their characteristics. And to be successful in this lesson, we will be able to describe how organisms are similar or different. Suggest how to sort living things, another name for organisms. And explain how and why I have sorted organisms or living things. Okay, so how do you think we could sort these living things into groups? Okay, if you had two big hoops, as we get older, we join those and we call them a Venn diagram. How could we do it? Have a little think. Look at the animals. Describe them. Okay, what has this robin got that this bunny does not, or this rabbit, I should say, does not have? Okay. Hmm. Right, we have two pointy ears. We have a beak. Does this rabbit have a beak? No. So perhaps we could start by sorting that. So animals or living things with beaks, animals without beaks. Or perhaps we could do wings. Animals with wings, look, bat, owl, dragonfly, butterfly, animals without wings, squirrel, rabbit. I, I must say organisms because of course we must include everything. Beetle. Ah, bee has wings. So have a think, how could we sort them? Okay. We could also have two ways of sorting them. So we could say has fur, has wings, and does it have both, which is our Venn diagram, do we put it in the middle? Okay, so what over here, would anything have fur and wings? Hmm, let me see. Depends if you class the owl as having fur. I suppose it has feathers technically, so I'm not entirely sure. We would call it fur. Mm, I think we the fox would have fur, but it doesn't have any wings. So not, perhaps we should think of another way of classifying it. Let's do fur and a, what about long, long ears? Could be another way. Let's have a think. There are thousands of ways to classify animals. So squirrel and rabbit would go in the middle there. Do, 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 do. What else has fur? So the fox has fur, but he doesn't have very long ears compared to the rabbit. So we would write fox in here, fox, and long ears and fur, rabbit. Did anything, 
Did any of the living things have just long ears but no fur? Hmm. I suppose it's proportionate to how big they are. How do you think? Can you think of an animal with long ears but no fur? Okay, so you get the idea of how to group. So let's look at our vocabulary. So we are classifying, talking about organisms again, living things, Venn diagrams, and we will come on to a Carroll diagram later on. Lots of different categories of living things. So vertebrates, fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals, and invertebrates, snails, slugs, worms, spiders, insects. Now, can you think of ways to sort these living things and classify them into groups? Have a little think on your own and pause the screen. How did you get on? Did you perhaps say that they could leap? Did you say that they are um, herbivores? Okay. Like I said, lots of different ways you could just use your descriptions to classify the living things. Why do you think it is important to classify organisms? Why are we learning about this? Well, let's see. There are millions of species of plants and animals in the world. It would be very difficult to just identify and name each animal individually. Instead, we can assign them to groups according to things they have in common. This is known as a classification system. Classifying animals helps to identify similarities between organisms and to identify unfamiliar organisms. It also makes it easier for researchers and scientists to discuss and find out about plants and animals. So perhaps if you were to become a scientific researcher one day, you might find a new type of species that we didn't know, and you would look at it and realise that it didn't fit into one of the common classification systems, and you think, oh, it's got something new. Have a think, what might it have that could be totally new we have never seen before? And that's why we classify. I remember there are, oh, I don't even know how many living things are on this planet. Perhaps you could try and search that. Is it possible to know if there are so many, and especially all the undiscovered ones? So I imagine there are thousands, if not millions. Right, note down these living things. And I'll put animals, but I'm going to change it to, what is our word? Organism. But I don't think there are any plants, organisms. Okay, good scientific word there. So we've got ladybird, bee, fish, snake, chicken, sheep, fox, frog, owl, robin, squirrel, bat, worm, spider, butterfly, cow, snail crab, dolphin and duck. And I've just thought as I'm saying this, could you do a challenge and find out any of these as their Latin names? Because normally living things are categorized in their Latin names. Often you'll find that in very old scientific studies or books, or even now, I imagine they are definitely still used by the scientists as their Latin name. So have a look, see if you can find it out. That's just a little challenge and we will move on. So our bronze activity, we are going to be sorting and classifying the animals, the living things, the organisms I've just read out. So let's just have a look at them again. So you've got them. Have you written the names down? Ladybird, bee, fish, snake, frog, fox, sheep, chicken, Rat, squirrel, robin, owl, worm, spider, butterfly, cow, duck, dolphin, crab, and snail. So if you want a little bit of support, you could use this sheet. So animals you can classify, you can draw it in your book if you've got one. Animals with fur, animals without fur, keep it nice and simple. Animals with tails, animals without tails. Animals with wings, 
animals without wings. Okay, now I'd hope everyone in our year group can do that. Then silver task. Can you think of three different ways of sorting animals into two different groups? Write the sorting criteria in the table, then sort the animals into the correct categories. So similar to what you've just seen, but you're thinking up your own categories. So what did we have here? Bert tells wings. So perhaps we could say has claws, does not have claws. I could think all sorts of things. Has feathers, does not have feathers. And then the gold task, this is the carol diagram I mentioned earlier. So there you have has legs or no legs and has fur or no fur. So if it has fur and legs, you write the answer in here. If it has fur but no legs, you write it in here. If it has legs but no fur, you write it in here. And if it has no fur and no legs, you write it in here. So it's just a slightly more complex way of sorting the organisms. So I've said here, create your own carol diagram to sort the animals according to different criteria. So rather than using has legs or no legs, what could you put in the top boxes? How would you like to sort and classify the different living things? Okay, brilliant. Well, we look forward to seeing this work when you've done it. Hope you have fun really identifying and thinking and classifying all these living things. And please remember to send your work to year four at thepalmacademy.com. Thank you very much. Speak soon.